Good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here sharing with you the experience in our country. Uh, I am Veronica Schoch, the Executive Director of the Inter-American Heart Foundation, uh, um, which is an organization that, uh, who, whose, uh, which mission uh, is to prevent the um, cardiovascular non-communicable disease uh, through the promotion of, of health policy. We are a group of Inter-American Heart Foundations in the region. It's a regional organization. We have our central organization in the United States and one in Argentina, uh, one in Mexico and in Jamaica. And we develop a sort of strategies to promote public policy with a human rights perspective mostly. To better understand what I'm going to share with you, it's necessary to, to talk a little bit about our legal system in Argentina. We have a, a, our supreme law that is the constitution, the national constitution that was amended in 1994. And from the amendment, uh, every human right treaty uh, has a, a hierarchical constitution in the constitution, a constitutional hierarchy in our country. That means that our state is obliged to protect fundamental rights uh, when a party. What is the shadow reporting process uh, and which was our experience? The, the international human rights treaties have a mechanism, a surveillance mechanisms, and the governments have to present official reports, but some human rights also have the possibility, the, the, the formal uh, methodology to, uh, for civil society to present shadow report or parallel reports together with the government report. Uh, mostly civil society focus on omissions, deficiencies, or inaccuracies in the official government reports, addressing the issues that the government didn't. Uh, then there is the possibility to present the shadow report in uh, United Nations. Then the committee, the expert committee at the United Nations uh, evaluate the report, both reports, civil society and government reports, and give recommendations to the state party. This is a process that is very common in many human rights treaties. Uh, why are so important shadow reports? State parties may ignore treaty obligations and civil society must claim their compliance. Uh, key factors, uh, the, the shadow reports are key factors to strengthen surveillance mechanisms. Uh, many times these parallel or shadow reports give valuable insight to the parties, are essential advocacy tools, very powerful advocacy tools to warrant the protection of human rights and in this case to strengthen the tobacco control policies useful to link the tobacco control agenda with the human rights agenda, and useful as a litigation tool. Which is the process to present a shadow report? That is what we did in, two, in the two cases I am going to, to, uh, to show you. Uh, the first of all is a substantive expertise to develop the report, which means human rights expertise, tobacco control expertise, in the case of CEDAW report, gender issues expertise, and international law expertise. This only can happen with a partnership with local NGOs, uh, for example, human rights NGOs together with tobacco control NGOs or gender perspective NGOs uh, to, to have this substantive expertise to develop the, the, the um, uh, report. Then there is an important step to present the report before the United Nations and advocacy strategy uh, in the UN committee to increase awareness and the link the tobacco control agenda with the human rights treaty being discussed, and then to use it back home uh, for have a significant impact in policy and cultural change. Uh, we developed two shadow reports before CEDAW and the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. And we did this in two different moments of our legislation, tobacco control situation. Argentina is a non-ratifying country. Uh, we have a, an enormous industry interference during 40 years old. Every bill uh, could not be passed. And in uh, June uh, 2011, we could finally pass a national law that includes 100% smoke-free environments at national level, a comprehensive ban of advertisement promotion and sponsorship, and also pictorial warning. We developed the CEDAW shadow report before, one year before the national law was enacted, and the International Covenant uh, shadow report five months after the law was enacted. So the context was different, and what we asked also was different. 
The CEDAW experience, the CEDAW is the Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women passed in 1979 by the General Assembly in the United Nations. It's an international treaty for the protection of the human rights of women. And CEDAW obliges state parties to adopt policy that integrate women's rights to health in national legislation. And it's also a basic document to sustain the promotion of gender equality within the international human rights legal framework. Why we decided to present a shadow report uh, uh, before CEDAW committee. Argentina became a state party of CEDAW in 1985. Article 12 in CEDAW states the protection of the right to health for women. Tobacco epidemic is alarming among Argentinian women. We have a, a, a really a, a problem. The there has been an increase in tobacco use, particularly among young women. We have now uh, girls smoking more than boys in adolescent. The lung cancer case is duplicated in women among the two last decades, and there is a higher exposure to secondhand, among, uh, secondhand smoke among women as compared with men. That Argentina was failing to meet its international obligation established by public international law. This was the context situation when they decided to prepare this shadow report. And talking about partnership, which is an essential thing, we, uh, uh, our main partners were the O'Neill Institute of Shorestown University, the Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids, many other organizations at local level, but particularly I want to mention FEIM, which is perhaps the most important gender organization in Argentina and one of the most recognized gender uh, organization in our region, in Latin America, which was a key factor to, to bring together a tobacco control agenda with gender agenda. With this uh, group of organizations, we developed the report, and our uh, attorney, Belen Rios, that unfortunately cannot be here with us, uh, presented in the United Nations together with Oscar Cabrera from the O'Neill Institute, who is here in the panel sharing with us. Uh, well, the, the focus of the report, this report was presented in July uh, 2010 in the United Nations, and the focus was that the tobacco industry target women through advertising, uh, which increase the consumption, and this is a form of discrimination uh, because it damages the health of women. So we focus on three requests, ratification of FCTC, smoke-free environments, 100% smoke-free environments, and complete ban of advertisement promotion and sponsorship as a way to protect human right to health. The recommendation to the state, uh, to the Argentine state from the committee included the tobacco control recommendation and in our knowledge it was the first time it happened in the history of the CEDAW uh, treaty. And the article 39 and 40 state clearly that the committee is concerned about the widespread use of tobacco among women in Argentina and the serious health impact of tobacco on women. The committee is particularly concerned that women are often targets in tobacco advertising campaigns, which encourage the, and increase the usage of tobacco among women, resulting in tobacco-related diseases and death. And the Article 40 of the recommendations to the Argentine state says the committee urged the state party to ratify and implement the FCTC and put in place legislation aimed at banning smoking in public spa spaces and restricting tobacco advertising. In the case of the Covenant, the International Covenant uh, for Social, Cultural and Economic Rights, it's another uh, human rights treaty that passed in 1966 by the General Assembly of the United Nations, and Argentina became a state party in 1986. Argentina actually is a member of almost every international human rights treaty. Unfortunately, this is not the case for the FCTC, but there is a political will to be part of international human rights treaties in our country. Uh, we developed exactly the same process with the International Covenant that I described with CEDAW. The Article 12 for, uh, for the International Covenant also states the protection of the right to health. And the report was presented before the uh, United Nations Committee in November 2011, five months after we had enacted the law. So the focus in this in this uh, parallel shadow report was the implementation, the full implementation, the regulation and implementation of the national law, which has not been uh, uh, fully implemented yet now. Again, the ratification of the FCTC, and we added something new that didn't appear in the CEDAW report, that is tobacco taxes and prices increase, which is a main priority in Argentina, where uh, uh, the cigarettes are the most cheap, 
uh, they are the cheapest, uh, almost the cheapest in Latin America, and with a high level and increasing level of affordability because the inflation uh, and salary rise much more than prices of cigarettes. So we are a very, very cheap cigarettes in our country, uh, which is a priority. So we introduced this new issue, and the recommendations to the state party, again, our lawyer, Belen Rios presented in the United Nations with a strong advocacy a strategy uh, in the, uh, within the committee. Uh, and the recommendations to the state party also included uh, tobacco control, recommendations to protect human rights. The committee is concerned, is, this is stated in the Article 23 of the recommendations, the committee is concerned about the high level of tobacco consumption in the state party. What happened? Well, the other thing that says that uh, urge to the state to uh, ratify the FCTC again and include the recommendations to uh, uh, develop campaigns to educate the population and, and to increase taxes and thank you and to increase taxes and prices to protect uh, the health of the, the of the population and put a particular focus in women and youth the, the measurement to increase taxes as a particular you, uh, um, a strategy to protect women and youth. So, how did we use in advocacy? Uh, we use uh, a lot in advocacy. Actually, the CEDAW uh, shadow report was a, a powerful uh, strategy in advocacy to promote the national enactment of the law. Uh, decision makers were very sensitized to this. It, we use, use it to support the FCTC ratification, and we use it a lot for media campaigns. And I want to share with you just this article. The title of this article is Tobacco Control in the Human Rights Agenda. And what we try to, to push is uh, not only to promote tobacco control policies, but also uh, to, to link the agendas of human rights and tobacco control and change the environmental uh, and the culture. So the conclusions for our this experience, tobacco control is a human right issue, and it requires the commitment of the state to warranty the implementation of effective measurements. The use of binding international tools like these treaties provides a great opportunity and a powerful tool to incorporate tobacco control in the human rights agenda. Committee recommendations were extremely useful to our advocacy strategy to promote the law and the FCTC. Shadow reporting strengthened the partnership with other key organizations from the civil society, like human rights or gender organizations. And this is not a conclusion, but a request, or at least a reflection, that we would love to have this kind of mechanisms in the FCDC, where the civil society has not the formal uh, methodology to present shadow reports to better surveillance the FCTC implementation. And it would be uh, um, nice to have this possibility to discuss it. Thank you very much.